In this video, I want to share a little bit about my personal experience discovering something called integral theory. And what I like about integral theory is that I can use it as an interesting framework for, for defining how our society is evolving and it allows me to kind of map the ways in which our cultures are developing. So one thing to say up front is that I am in no way an expert on this. I literally discovered it in March and I have a, an overview understanding of it at the moment, but I already find myself using it as a, as a reference point. I use the, the colors that are involved in it to sort of describe different people's opinions or perspectives or behaviors. So how it's described on the website is that this is a map. It's uh, mapping the territory of our evolution. It's understanding where we fit into the developmental cycle as we evolve. And I've been exploring it specifically within two fields, one with film and storytelling and the other with organizational design. I recently did a course in, in filmmaking using integral theory and I've been reading a book that's super interesting on how this can define our new organizations that we are creating. Now for this video, I'm just gonna focus on the levels. These seem to be the main parts to practical applications and have come up in both the film course and the book that I'm gonna go into in a sec. So the levels are often portrayed and sometimes referred to in their colors. It's mapped out like a spectrum. These are like the, the, the bookmarks or the kind of almost think of them like the generations, millennial, etc. and there's seven of them. It's archaic, magic, mythic, rational, pluralistic, and integral. So let me just take you through each of the stages really quickly and give a brief description of each. So archaic is the first one. This is the earliest stage and this represents the instinctive form of consciousness that's orientated around basic survival. Magic refers to the early tribal formations and it revolves around things like uh, suspicions and, and rituals. This is where they give gods to everything to explain the world. Egoic is the next stage, and this one is centered around impulse, conquest, or action, living for the now, essentially. Mythic is where meaning and discipline starts to come in, and we start to see legends and folklores in culture. This stage is usually associated with feudal empires. The next stage is the rational stage, and this is usually associated with materialism, status, and growth. This is where we start to see multi-party democracies form. Pluralistic is the dominant stage that we find ourselves in today, at least in terms of culture. Holding more of an egalitarian mindset, this is about sharing and care for each other. Characterized by social democracy, globalism, and an informational society. Integral is the emergent paradigm we're starting to see come through today. This one is characterized by being ecocentric focused on the development of natural systems, sitting with multiple realities, and essentially integrating all of the previous stages up until this point. This is why it's often referred to being second tier, because it converges all of the stages that have come before. There are two more stages to this, but it starts getting into the sort of transcended consciousness and I think that might be a bit woo for some people. So I'm, I haven't needed to kind of go into it too much myself so far. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. So now that we've covered the main aspects of integral theory, I wanna ground this in a practical example of how this can be applied or, or used to understand the systems that we operate in. So I've been reading this book called Reinventing Organizations by Frederick Lalou. Lalou, Lalou, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but you know, he's French. Um, I'm probably never gonna get it right. But yeah, basically this book is just, it's one of those books where it's just speaking your language, you know? It's talking about stuff that you just intrinsically go, yes, like I, f I feel that. It's something, you know, it, what, I, what I like about this is it gives me, it gives me confirmation and validity to all of the things that I've been thinking about moving towards and, and working on while also giving me the blueprints to, to take that further. And what's really great is it also gives really clear examples of how this is used in practice and, and what are the pitfalls and misunderstandings that people might have about using these kind of practices in the workplace. Now this is not a book review, I've only read up to here, but if you'd like me to go into more depth in this, just let me know in the comments and I will do a proper book review thing, break it down once I've finished it. So to start off with, there was, there was one way in which it really concisely spoke about the differences between the levels in terms of how organizations at different levels operate. 
Orange sees the organization like a machine and the people as entities or cogs within that. Green sees them like a family and Teal sees the organization as a living system. Now, I think it would be obvious to say that a lot of people are already getting a little disenfranchised by the way in which companies operate already. There was one point specifically it made in the book where uh, a lot of the time those who are transitioning into a more teal perspective find themselves completely disillusioned by the organizations out there and end up tending f towards uh, freelancing so that they are able to have the autonomy that they kind of expect from their work. This is particularly interesting to me because I'm looking at creating an organization using some of these methods to bring freelancers together and allow them to collaborate where they can be using and gaining the benefits of a company while still retaining their autonomy. One thing that I thought was really interesting about this was that all of the examples that they give in the book are all acting independently of each other. They are unaware of each other. It shows that this is something that has emerged naturally. It's not a case of some sort of new system that is, is banded around someone writing a book about it and then people picking it up. It is literally an emergent paradigm that is coming out of our previous organizational models. One thing that came across immediately was the difference between top-down hierarchy towards a more holocratic way of organization. And in this sense, this takes me to the second sort of takeaway really that is around self-organization as a principle. This is something that comes up time and time again where it's about taking that top-down control and pushing it out to the edges, pushing it out further into the organization where people can be making their own decisions, they can be operating from their own sovereignty, their own autonomy, and be working together in, in teams where there are, there are no bosses, it's literally just you are beholden to your team. It's almost reversing the hierarchy where you know the people at the, the bottom have the most amount of decisions and they only push up the things that they choose to. Fundamentally, this comes down to a letting go of control. It's about removing the ego from our, our way of working and essentially it's 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 really getting to the core of that fear that, that underlies that need for control when you actually allow yourself to trust in the system that is there trust in the people that are part of that organization and you're being open and 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 honest and authentic and vulnerable with those people that's where I think the, the magic really, really comes out of it. And what's beautiful is that it actually simplifies so much. There's so many examples in here in which, you know, you start off with these highly bureaucratic or complicated systems that are being the, the developed to be able to keep track of people. And actually, when you sort of remove all of these and you allow people to have their own autonomy, not only does it make them feel better about working, but it actually makes the whole thing far more efficient, far more effective. So I really see this as being a direction that, that more organizations will go in the future. And it certainly seems to tick loads of the boxes in which I've been exploring. And I'm sure it's even gonna bring in some of the organizations that I've probably looked at as well that are, that are doing some of these similar practices. Now this letting go of ego is, is very central to what I'm working on and I believe that it's through removing this fear and letting go of our ego within our work, we can actually be collaborating far better. I see that as being a real restriction on us being able to actually work and be effective in the world. Once we remove that ego and once we remove the fear that, that, is, that is attached to that, then a whole load of possibilities are gonna be opened up to us. So that's a little overview of integral theory and how it can be applied for organizational design. Let me know in the comments if you do want me to do a full book review of this once I've finished. I'm sure it won't take me long because it is awesome. Follow me on Instagram because I do post a few of these little insights as they come. In the future, I'll also do a, a video that breaks down the filmmaking course that I did, which is also based on integral theory.